me turn this music off. We can go ahead and get started. So, hi everyone, my name is Laura Vassans. Um, thank you for coming. I'm the MidMichigan Community and Online Organizer with Planned Parenthood here in Michigan. Thank you. <laughs> officials, Planned Parenthood patient advocates, and Planned Parenthood volunteers about what Planned Parenthood means to them. So you might notice tonight that I'm dressed a little retro, a little vintage, a little 1940s. You may have been able to hear the music when you were coming in. Um, so I want to say to start, 50 years ago, in 1947, President Harry Truman introduced the idea of universal health care for all Americans in his fair deal. And that clearly didn't happen, because here we are right now. So today, I am wearing this 40s-inspired outfit because we are still fighting for health care for all Americans. Since Inauguration Day, January 20th, Planned Parenthood health centers across the country have served a million patients. Many of our patients, they have incredible staff that our health centers. Um, many of our patients, as you know, are uninsured or underinsured, even with the Affordable Care Act in place. If Trump Care passes, the Congressional Budget, Office es Congressional Budget Office estimates that 23 million people will lose health coverage. If Trump Care passes as written, Planned Parenthood will lose federal funding through reimbursement programs like Medicaid and Title X, and will have a difficult time serving those newly uninsured 23 million people. But did you know that if you have private insurance, you can still use Planned Parenthood services? You can. No, one's, no one is looking at me? Okay, cool. Thank you. That is actually very helpful for our folks who are uninsured or underinsured. So if you do have private insurance, please consider becoming a Planned Parenthood patient. Um, I'm proud to say that I am not only a Planned Parenthood staff member, I'm a former volunteer, a former intern, and a current patient of Planned Parenthood. So tonight, Planned Parenthood patients and supporters will pink the night out all across the country and call on the Senate to protect access to health care. Everything is on the line for the 2.4 million patients that rely on Planned Parenthood services annually and whose health care is on the chopping block as part of Trump Care. Planned Parenthood supporters nationwide tonight are rallying to light the night sky with pink and send one message to the Senate. Do not take my health care away. Right now, the Senate is pushing hard and fast to vote on Trump Care in the next Two weeks. Some of you might have heard on NPR at about 5 o'clock today that we might get to see a bill tomorrow, maybe. Not sure yet though. Some members of the Senate, like 14 of them or something, are working in secret. They won't hold hearings or listen to health care experts um, and just refusing to acknowledge that this legislation would be devastating for millions. This isn't a drill. Um, if this bill passes, people will be unable to come to Planned Parenthood for care. Millions will lose, the, lose their insurance, and the price of insurance coverage will skyrocket to being unaffordable for far too many people. Trump Care is the worst bill for women's health in a generation, and it must be stopped now. And that's why we're all here tonight, and I thank you all for joining us. Unintended pregnancy, harder to have a healthy pregnancy, and harder to raise a family. Trump Care would block people from going to Planned Parenthood for preventive care, including birth control, cancer screenings, and STD testing and treatment. Trump Care would gut maternity care, roll back Medicaid coverage, and allow insurance companies to discriminate against women and charge exorbitant prices. The Senate must listen to the 80% of voters who support Planned Parenthood and reject efforts to block people from getting care at Planned Parenthood. People across this country are outraged with Trump Care and are taking action. Y'all are here tonight, and I thank you again for that. You're sending a clear message to Congress. Don't take our health care away. Now I would like to introduce Ann Arbor Mayor Christopher Taylor. He was elected in 2014 after serving on city council and is deeply involved in our community, serving on the boards of 826 Michigan and Festivals. Mayor Taylor is also one of 106 mayors from across the country who has signed on to a letter of support for Planned Parenthood that was sent to congressional leadership. Please help me welcome Mayor Christopher Taylor.
Thank you so very much, and thank you all so much for being here. This is uh, an incredibly uh, exciting turnout for uh, for an incredibly important uh, important purpose. You know, today, uh, now, more generally, it's a time in our country of tremendous uncertainty. Uh, you know, when we woke up, all of us, on November 9th, we, you know, we anticipated, uh, you know, the dishonor uh, that our nation would endure having, uh, you know, having elected and entrusted our country to as, uh, a people and as party as cruel and as reckless as the ones we have now in Washington. Uh, but when we woke up on November 9th, uh, you know, we knew we'd be in a different place. Uh, but I think few among us really imagined uh, the breadth and heartlessness of the assault on science, on poverty, on climate, on immigrants, refugees, and disfranchised. And now, of course, the final insult uh, that brings us here today, the assault of this president and this party on women in health care. And that is what we face here in America today. And it is my hope that over time, that over time America will reject Trumpism. Uh, and, but whether that hope will be realized is, of course, and regrettably unknown. Uh, I am, however, uh, today proud and confident that in Ann Arbor, we are indeed already there. You know, in Ann Arbor, uh, we know that our nation, the richest and most powerful in the world in history, that we ought to be able to figure out what every other developed nation in the world seems to have accomplished. We know that millions of uninsured, that that is a national disgrace. We also know that a thriving and funded Planned Parenthood is indeed a force for good. It means sex education, treatment for STDs, cancer diagnoses, and birth control. Women and families, they depend on it. Communities, particularly those at the intersection of multiple oppressions, LGBTQ, immigrants, people of color, low income, these communities need it. And so that's why I'm so proud to stand here today and always, to be part of supporting Planned Parenthood, and today an important movement across America to tell Congress and to tell the President that health care is a right, that women's health, a woman's right to choose, that these are non-negotiable, and that when Congress and the President put these rights under attack, that we will all of us fight back. That's what we're here doing today, and that's why I'm so proud to see you here joining us together. So thank you so very, very much for what you're doing today. <laughs> demonstrating your support for Planned Parenthood. We're lucky to have you here. Now, so now um, I would like to introduce uh, State Representative Yusuf Rabi, who has sent a wonderful staff member from his office to be here with us tonight. But let me tell you a little bit about the representative, who I wind up just running into like all the time. Um, <laughs> So he's in his first term as a state representative. He's a graduate of the University of Michigan. He was previously a Washtenaw County Commissioner, and prior to his state house election, he worked as the volunteer coordinator at the Botanical Gardens. So please help me welcome a representative, a representative from the representative office, <laughs> Jelani Kwanna. <laughs> Any of you who know Representative Robbie, he's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, so as much as I would like to fill his height, uh, I am many, many inches too short. But I just want to let all of you know that uh, I'd first like to apologize he's not here with us today, but I don't want you to think that, that, um, that he's not committed to the cause of expanding health care to all Americans, to protecting the rights of women, to ensure that they can ex access the care that, they, that all of you so richly deserve. The right to health care has been long fought through our history. In fact, the, the first bill for health care was introduced in the 1800s, and although it was rejected by Congress at the time, throughout our history we continued to fight to make sure that each of us has access to a doctor, to a nurse, to the medicine that we need. It's a right that has been ignored, threatened, maligned, as we see today, it's not just simply the right to health care, but the very right that we should actually be healthy that has come to threat by our president and by our Congress. But I'm reminded of the motto of Planned Parenthood, which is care no matter what. 
it isn't just simply a slogan for Planned Plan Plan Parenthood, but I would say it is a motto that reflects our community's values. No matter who you are, where you come from, what your age is, you deserve the right to have a quality of life. Because for those of us who believe in this, either if we are directly in public service, volunteering for Planned Parenthood or other organizations, we all know that this is about ensuring that each person has the chance to achieve their dreams, no matter what they are. As long as we can come together and support our community, we have the right to make sure that we can do that to the fullest of our abilities. So with that being said, I am so happy to see all of you here, um, and I hope that we continue to show up. Uh, I'm a fan of the West Wing, and uh, my favorite quote of all of the iconic quotes is, decisions are made by those who show up. Trump care is still on the block, but we can make a decision. And we can either pick up the phone and make those calls, we can stand in front of those offices, we can bring shame to every member of Congress who wants to take away our right to see a doctor, our right to know uh, our status on varieties of, of, of STDs or making sure that we can receive uh, any of the care that we also richly deserve. We can embarrass them, bring them the shame, and stop this in its tracks. So with that, I appreciate the t-shirt, <laughs> and uh, let's give them help. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here in the Representatives Place tonight. Um, as many of you know, at least I hope you know by now, it is just as important to know the staff members and your representative's office. So come network with the representative's staff member from this district. Just going to put a little plug out there for you. You're going to be busy now. <laughs> All right, so next up, I would like to introduce Eli Rubin from Michigan United. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, are you ready to fight for Planned Parenthood? Yeah. Are you ready to fight Trump Care? Yeah. I want to thank Lauren and her dedicated team of volunteers and interns. Thank you so much, Lauren, for putting this together. So my name is Eli Rubin. I'm a volunteer with an organization called Michigan United. We're a social justice organization, um, and we are statewide, and we fight for uh, multiple forms of social justice, mass incarceration, ending it, um, fighting for immigration justice, fighting for environmental justice. We're fighting a new campaign for universal family care, um, and we also are fighting to stop the defunding of Planned Parenthood and the passing of Trump Care. And I encourage everybody to grab a flyer from our table over there um, and to sign up and to learn more about our work. Um, I want to say why we're here tonight. We're here tonight to fight. We are here to fight to save Planned Parenthood. And we are here to stop Senate Republicans from secretly passing Trump Care. We're not alone. Today is a national day of action. All over this country today, communities are mobilizing. They are mobilizing for this fight, so let's be crystal clear about what we're fighting for. Senate Republicans, led by Mitch McConnell, have, are, as we speak, drawing up an Obamacare replacement bill that is just as bad as the one that the House passed, the AHCA. They're doing this in secret, behind closed doors. No Democrats have seen this bill. Many Republicans have not seen this bill. They are going to, they're not going to have any opportunity to debate it. There won't be any hearings. There won't be any amendments. In fact, uh, many senators will only have barely hours to read it before it comes up for a vote, which could be at any point at this, uh, now, this week uh, or next. Some GOP senators, including Tom Cotton of Arkansas and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, themselves have started complaining about the secrecy of this bill. There's a reason for this secrecy. What is in this bill is profoundly unpopular. From what we know, it's not much different than the AHCA, which polled at 17% approval rate in this country. But what we know is in it is this. The Senate's bill will take health care away from 23 million Americans. Many of these are our society's most vulnerable members, the elderly, children with disabilities, 
our working class, and people with pre-existing conditions. Of these 23 million, many, possibly hundreds of thousands, will die as a direct result of losing their health care. In Michigan, at least 600,000 people will lose their health care because of this. This includes 72,000 veterans, people. 72,000 veterans who don't qualify for the VA will lose the, the Medicaid that they depend on. Many more will lose the access to health care that they depend on if Planned Parenthood is defunded. As Lauren never tires of saying, there are multiple counties, rural counties in Michigan and other states in this country where the only access that people have to health care is Planned Parenthood. Just think, if this were an epidemic disease or a natural disaster or a terrorist attack that threatened the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans, we'd all be mobilizing. We'd be donating blood, we'd be donating money, we'd be volunteering, we'd be praying even. This is no different. So you have to ask the question, why are Republicans doing this? Who benefits from throwing 23 million people out into the cold, children, elderly, veterans, and other people to fend for themselves? The Republicans, and some Democrats, owe a debt to their corporate donors. First and foremost, the health insurance companies. These companies are among the very few industries in the capitalist world that make money the less they serve their customers, not the more. What this is really all about is a massive transfer of wealth from those who need it in order to live to those who don't need it at all. If the Senate passes Trump Care and the President signs it, in Michigan, our state will need at least half a billion dollars to keep the people who gained Medicaid under Obamacare um, having access to health care. That money is going to come out of your pockets. It's going to come out of your schools. It's going to come out of your roads, which are already in pretty bad condition here in Michigan. Also that 7,300 of Michigan's richest families making over a million dollars a year can get an extra $28,000 a year in a tax break, which they don't need. Who's mad yet? I can't hear you. Who's mad yet? They have money, but we have people, right? We have people and we have numbers. So I want to know who is going to go out there tonight and tomorrow and the next day and fight this thing tooth or nail. Who's going to call? Who's going to find five of their friends and neighbors and get them to call? And get them to find five, five more of their friends and neighbors to call? As Barack Obama always says, we're the ones we've been waiting for. So we can do this together. Let's get out there, let's march, let's call, and let's organize. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Eli. Folks out in the hall, you are welcome to come on in. Come on, squeeze in. As long as you, we're still got a fire code. Come on, squeeze in. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Again, thank you, Eli. Um, Michigan United is such a crucial partner tonight. They will be the ones helping us to, this is what they do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Liz, um, and I started going to Planned Parenthood when I was 19. I had never been there before because I had been told by a friend in high school that they were very expensive and to not go there for birth control. So when I first started going there was because I had found out I was pregnant. It was an unplanned pregnancy, and it was something that my my boyfriend, who's now my husband, um, were not ready to have a baby at that time. And so I went to Planned Parenthood to have the pregnancy confirmed and to talk to them regarding my options. When I got there, um, it's something that they went over every option that was available. They talked about adoption, they talked about continuing the pregnancy, and they talked about having an abortion. And I let her know that that's what I was, that's what I wanted to do. Um, but she still counseled me. She talked to me and made sure that this was something that I wanted to do and I wasn't being pushed into doing this. Um, unfortunately, because the clinic that I lived by did not uh, perform abortions there, so I had to travel about four hours to get to a clinic to um, have the procedure done. When I got there, they provided more counseling at that point. Um, they also provided it away from my husband because they wanted to make sure that this was something 
that I was doing for myself and not being pushed into. They also counseled me on birth control because they didn't want to see me back there. They wanted to do what they could to make sure I wasn't back in this position again. And so um, we talked about all the different types of birth control to find out which one was the right for me. Um, during the procedure, the doctor and the nurse who assisted him are two of the best clinicians that I've ever had contact with. Um, the doctor was uh, so very kind and compassionate and he tried talking to me just about me and my life to try and get me um, my mind off of the procedure, but also made sure to explain what he was doing when so I wasn't surprised at what he was doing. Um, but making this decision was not something that I was happy about. I wasn't um, excited to have this done. I was upset, I was emotional, so I did start to cry. And the nurse, I remember her um, putting her hand on my shoulder to try and comfort me. And when I was crying, she was wiping away my tears. And I've never had contact with doctors or nurses who were that kind and compassionate. So I'm, I'm so grateful for what they did. Um, when I left there, they did make sure that I had birth control so I wouldn't end up back there and had me follow up with my clinic in my city, um, which I did and found out that my friend was wrong <laughs> and that at Planned Parenthood, they allow you to um, pay what you can afford. And that was so huge to me because I was young, I didn't have a lot of money, I didn't have insurance, and I needed care. When I started going to that clinic for my yearly visits, they really stressed the importance of having a yearly cancer screen with a pap smear, um, taught me how to do self-breast exams, and did all of that, and it was very, very stressed with them because you couldn't keep getting birth control if you had not had an exam within the last year. And um, I took that education with me, and when I was finally able to get insurance and had moved a few times and found a doctor, I had a pap smear done and it came back as um, with abnormal cells. Uh, I had to be referred to a specialist and had to have a biopsy and after that found out I had precancerous cells. Um, had them removed and everything was okay. But I just think about what could have happened had I not had the education that Planned Parenthood gave me and I think that that's something huge that they provide that not everywhere does. They, they teach people how to take care of themselves, what they need to do, what type of tests they should be having done, and how to prevent pregnancies. It's just, they gave you a lot of education. And it was, I'm just so very grateful for the experience that I had there and for everything that they taught me with um, birth control and getting your legal pap, pap exams and, and all that. So. <laughs> in this way. Um, but no, it, it's fantastic to see you. And as Lauren said, my name's Chris Mattis. I'm a regional director in Senator Peters' office. Unfortunately, Senator Peters is unable to be here this evening himself. He's in Washington, D.C., where today, maybe you caught him this afternoon, I think it was about 4, 10. He was on the floor saying a lot of the same things I heard Eli say and a lot of the other great speakers say this evening. But how important it is to ensure that women and their families have access to the important services that Planned Parenthood provides. Not only the access to contraception and the, and, and the access to information that allows women to make the decisions that are best for their bodies and their families, but access to vital cancer screening and preventive care that helps save lives. And as was brought up a lot this evening, this is not only often the only way that many of these people have to access this vital care, but things like the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare they fund whole economies of hospitals and systems that really are the backbone of not only central city large communities, but rural communities across Michigan and across the United States. And as Eli brought up, you know, stealing all my talking points, but I love it, Eli. As Eli brought up, you know, right now, Senate Republicans are trying to put together a bill in secrecy, not only hiding it from the American people, not only hiding it from Democratic senators like Senator Peters and Senator Sabin and their colleagues, but even hiding it from members of their own party out of fear that it'll ruffle feathers, it'll be too embarrassing, or they won't be able to hold together the support that they need. So as Lauren said, please keep calling Senator Peters, keep calling Senator Stabenow, keep calling Congresswoman Dingell. Keep thanking them for the work that they do because they really need to feed off your enthusiasm and your energy. But I also want to assure you that for someone like my boss, Senator Peters, a proud father of two daughters, ensuring the future access to the, import, uh, to the important services of Planned Parenthood and access to health care that was you know, expanded and really uh, strengthened through things like the Affordable Care Act, it's personal. 
and it's personal for his colleagues, and I'm glad to see it's personal for you, and I'm really excited you're here, and thank you for letting me join you. All right, folks, so I would like to invite you all now in your beautiful pink, which is everywhere, and I love it so much, in your glow sticks. Um, I would like to invite you all to join us.